Hey guys, I'm Bill and I'm on the water. Anyways, we're ready to get the day started. I got my coffee going. Bear's ready to go for his walk. Uh, totally excited. You know why? It's that time of year. It's rockfish trophy season. So here we are at Island Tackle with Dave and Brian and they're here to talk to us about the, the upcoming season. Let's do it. Yeah. So when's the season start? April 21st, Saturday. That's pretty awesome. Why don't you tell everybody where we're located? Yep. So we are at 1915 Main Street uh, here in Chester. We're right next to the Safeway. We're the end unit right here. So if you can find the Safeway or the Chick-fil-A, you're here. All right. So you're going to show us how to rig up everything? Yep. We'll show you some lures we use, some rigging, go over a couple tips, and get you ready for the season. All right. Sounds good. Let's check it out. So opening day coming up this Saturday, uh, April 21st. So it's typically the third Saturday in April when we enter our trophy season uh, here in the Chesapeake Bay. Um, it's Water temperatures now are starting to kind of get up to where they need to be. Over the past couple of days, they've been hovering around 50. Typically, these fish will start moving up and spawning mid-50s to 60-degree water. Um, so right now, it's getting to be just about right for guys that are going to be going out here on opening weekend. Um, some of the most common tackle that we use this time of the year is it's, it's mainly a trolling game. So we pull large parachute lures like these guys here that range anywhere from 2 ounces all the way up to 16 ounces. Uh, the main goal that we're trying to achieve uh, when trolling this time of the year is to imitate the profile of a bunker or a manhaven. Um, typically they're going to be 8 to 12 inches in size uh, this time of the year. So we'll typically run these parachutes with a 9 inch shed. Um, and then as far as uh, trolling speed, well, you know, most guys will typically stay between two and a half to three miles an hour. Um, you know, that's one of the most important things as well as your depth of your lure. So most of the fish this time of the year are going to be in the top 15 to 20 feet of the water column. That reason being is they're on their way into spawn, uh, typically in the upper reaches of the bay and then some of the main rivers around here that branch off as well. Um, so that top 15 to 20 feet is the first to warm. Um, so typically that's going to be their warmest column, column of water where they're comfortable. Um, so that'll be where you're going to want to focus most of your baits. Uh, so one of the most important things this time of the year is going to be the water temperature and where you want to focus your baits. So most of these fish are on their uh, way to the northern reaches of the bay, the Susquehanna to spawn, as well as some of the main tributaries that branch off in a lot of the main rivers, such as the Chester River, Eastern Bay, um, the Potomac, uh, a lot of those major um, areas that they spawn. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is stagger your lures to different depths in that water column. Now the large majority of them are going to be in that top 15 to 20 feet just because that is the column that warms first to where they're most comfortable. Uh, there's really two factors that are going to determine your varying depth and that's going to be the overall weight that you have on your lure as well as the length of line out that you have. Um, so you can typically alter those two things to, to stagger your baits to a different level until you find out exactly where those fish are hanging um, and then you can start kind of queuing in and moving your baits up to uh, where you've been getting strikes. Um, you know, so some of the most common spreads, guys will stagger their lines off of their planer boards. So we'll typically run our lightest baits out furthest close to the board and furthest back. So for example, we would run a two ounce head out 100 feet furthest off of the board and then kind of stagger them as we get closer uh, with heavier baits, essentially creating a V as we go through the water column. And that's how you're going to want to start just because this time of the year these fish are spread out. They're not schooled together, it's mostly singles that are moving uh, north and south through the bay whether they're spawning or they're on their way out. Uh, so as we troll, um, we're essentially just collision fishing is what we call and we're trying to intersect these fish as they move north and south. So along with the water temperature uh, and the depth that your lures are running, the other major factor is going to be where do you start? Um, most of the time, as we said before, these fish are going to be moving north to south. So to give ourselves the best chance to intersect them, we're going to want to troll east to west or across the channels. Um, it helps for a couple of reasons. It allows you to go cross current as a stead, uh, instead of having to um, constantly figure out your speed of your lure as it moves through the water, whether you are going with the current, against the current. If we go cross current, it kind of gives you an even field. Um, so you're going to want to troll east to west uh, across any channel edges. These fish still are feeding on those big bunker. Um, so if you're marking bait, try to stay in that general area. Um, 
and as you go, you know, some good places to, to target that fish are always caught this time of year. Bloody Point, Love Point, uh, right along those channel edges where they come up. So typically guys will focus, you know, 40 to 50 foot of water and then move up into 30, even sometimes up into 20 feet of water. Sometimes those fish will venture up in there as well. Um, so the main channel uh, of the bay is where a lot of guys are going to focus. Don't be afraid to go up into a little bit shallower water because sometimes those big fish will be up in there. Um, but mainly you're going to want to stick with that east to west pattern, channel edges, uh, anywhere that really holds bait is where those fish are going to move to and give yourself the, the best chance to hook into one of these trophy fish. All right, so as far as tackle uh, this time of the year, our main uh, lure that we're going to be pulling are called parachute lures. Essentially what they are is a uh, poured lead head with a set hook and then nylon hair. Color-wise, the two most popular are white and chartreuse. Uh, you ask 10 people, you'll get 10 different answers as to what combination each guy likes to use. Um, the white and chartreuse are, are going to be your main constants in those. Um, so we'll typically pair these parachutes with a 9-inch shad uh, of either white or chartreuse as well. Uh, we do carry some other colors for uh, guys that like to mix it up a little bit. Um, but this is going to be your, your main setup that you're going to troll lure-wise. And there's two different ways that we'll pull those, um, or three really. We'll either pull them as a single rig, so where it's just one of those lures back uh, by itself. We'll also pull uh, tandem rigs. So essentially it's going to be two lures uh, of differing weights. So we typically like to have at least two ounces of separation between those lures. Um, so we've got our heavy head, which in this case is a six ounce, uh, and our lighter head, which in this case is a four ounce. Um, so we have that two ounces of separation and the way that we set those up is we'll rig them on 60 pound monofilament leader. Some guys use 80, some use 50, we use 60 here in the store, but anything in that range will have you covered. Uh, just gives you a little bit of leeway as far as uh, abrasion resistance and something to grab onto when you get that fish next to the boat. Um, so with the tandem rigs is we'll take this heavy lure uh, and it gets rigged on um, a one arm length of leader, so five or six feet and that's going to be your heavy head. This light head, which is also going to be pulled off of the same rod uh, in conjunction with that one, that one will be double the length. So typically go two arm lengths or somewhere 10 to 15 feet. Um, so essentially what you get when you put that together is you have your heavy head that's swimming down uh, deeper than this lighter head and it's going to be further back. So essentially going through the water, you're covering two different depths of the water column off of one rod and you get two baits in the water off of one rod. Um, so that's one of the most popular ways to run them. The next one is going to be what we call umbrella rigs. Essentially what they are is it's a uh, four or a six arm wire frame. Off of those we use brass snaps to connect uh, either shads or some of these eight inch twister tails. Um, these are just imitating a school of fish and then off of that we'll run a piece of that same 60 pound monofilament down the center. Typically 18 to 24 inches back off of that. Uh, so what that does is it's being pulled through the water is you have your bait just staggering behind so it either imitates uh, a predator trying to uh, feed on that school of bait fish or a single member of that school that has just fallen back or a wounded or injured bait fish and that's the one that they'll you know, most of the time go after. Um, so between tandem rigs, uh, umbrella rigs, and singles that's going to be your focus as far as what you're pulling tackle wise. Um, in the parachutes, like we had said before, you have some that are going to be made out of a nylon hair. Uh, a couple new ones that have come out this year are using a rubber skirt, so similar to some of the offshore lures. Advantage of that over nylon hair is care of it. These you can just rinse off and hang them anyway. Uh, the nylon hair is very similar to what's used on a doll's hair. Um, so, you know, after a couple fish, they can get matted up. you got to comb them out and take a little bit of care of them. Um, so we do always recommend having a comb with you on the boat because after you do catch fish or you get jellyfish in that hair, uh, you'll just want to comb it out to keep it straight. These fish can be uh, pretty finicky as to you know the presentation of one of these lures, so we always like to make sure that that hair is going to lay back and cover that bait um, pretty straight. If you've got some stray hairs that are going over, a lot of times those fish won't touch it for whatever reason. They, they can be pretty particular. One of the questions we get a lot at the store is how we put on uh, one of the 9-inch shads onto a parachute for our spring trolling rigs. Uh, it's a lot easier than it looks. It intimidates some people, but one of the easiest ways to go about doing it is if you take your shad uh, and just kind of lay it up next to uh, the hook. It'll give you an idea of where that hook bend is going to come out of this shad. 
So if you just make a, a, either a mental mark or you can put your finger there to kind of keep track of where that bend is going to be because that's what you're going to want to sit on the eye of this trailer hook. So we take where we had our mark and then we take the point of this trailer hook and we come into the back of the shed and you don't have to run real deep just run under the surface um, from there we feed it down typically until that fish uh, turns to about a 90 degree angle on the hook and then we come out as close to center as we can and then we feed that trailer hook back in so that it sits um, just nice and flush there so then what we do is we take our parachute and we feed that hook in directly in the center and we come back and all we're going to do is bring that hook point out through the eye of this trailer hook and feed it around and that's going to be your double hook setup and then that way as you're trolling and this hair lays out it comes back and will lay flat against both of those hooks increasing your chances to hook into one of these trophy fish. Cool. Right. So that's some of our rigging tips. Uh, feel free if you have any questions, come in. We're open seven days a week. Um, either myself's here, Brian's here. We got a couple other guys that uh, are very knowledgeable at fishing the bay, um, offshore stuff. We do uh, a little bit of everything. Um, but like I said, we're here seven days a week. We can be reached through Facebook. Uh, our website is itofishing.com, uh, or you can reach us by phone. The shop number here is 410-643-4099. Um, handle everything from if you just want to grab a couple bobbers to outfitting a new boat from fishing the bay or running out to the canyons offshore give us a call if you want to see more of these videos please hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel until next time everybody